Hi everyone and welcome to Upsize Down. Today we're going to take a tour of the nest. This is a sneak peek for next week's video where we're going to talk to the person who owns the nest and why they built it. Hey guys, welcome to the nest. Thanks for coming out tonight. Um, I'm here to give you a little tour just so you can see. Uh, we're amidst this social distancing thing and uh, so hopefully you guys can get a good taste of what this all looks like and a uh, good feel for what we've done here. So this is our model called the nest. It was made for a single person. The nest is a total of 230 square feet of the floor plan. But as you can feel in here, it feels a lot bigger just because of the visual space, the high ceilings and the windows help with the natural light coming in and it gives you a little a space of um, depth in here. So seeing as this is built for a single person, in this model we've chosen to go with a multi-purpose bed that um, is also your couch during the day. Um, this is actually a mattress um, and we have storage underneath that we can use for our blankets and our linens. So as you can see here, this is the main living area and the window makes it really open. Um, there's lots of natural light in here and uh, lots of natural light into your workspace here. This is a huge desk. Honestly, you could fit two people here. Um, it could be made a little bit smaller, but a great workspace, an extra chair for company. Um, you have a great huge spot for your TV here. Extra storage could be put underneath this desk if you needed to have extra storage there. And so here we have a sliding door um, that hides your electrical panel and easy access there. Um, it just adds a really big aesthetic to the space. And here we come into the bathroom. So in here, we do not have a compostable toilet. We have an actual toilet, people. Okay, that's amazing. We also have a sink with high-end finishes and lots of space underneath for your needs. Hey guys, this is a custom tiled shower um, with modern tile. It's lots of room in here with a shower panel with lots of pressure. This is awesome. So here we have the kitchen, which is a lot of storage for one person, I think. We have a high-end kitchen cabinets with soft closed drawers. There's ample storage inside here. Um, and also the counter space is, it's just huge, it is. With high-end finishes like this, this is like so nice, it's beautiful. Here we have space for a two burner cooktop. Um, another option, if you didn't want to have it cut into your counter where it's permanent, you could have an electric one that you could put away and then have your counter space free. Here we have a microwave fan hood space. Here we have the room for the apartment size fridge. And here we have a huge storage closet to house all your clothes and any utility items that you might need. Um, there's also seasonal storage and sports gear and all that, anything you can think of, you could fit it up here. This is a big thing that we always get people talking about where we're gonna have enough storage. Where they can't imagine. You have to start going through your stuff and um, looking up capsule wardrobes, minimalist wardrobes, it's possible. And this, honestly, if you ask Dan, we could fit both of our stuff in here, our whole wardrobes. So it is possible. <laughs> Welcome to the exterior of the nest. I'm Daniel and I want to point out how this house is on a trailer, but it's not on a trailer. You can see how the trailer sticks out past the house a little bit and then it's strapped down. When we come to its permanent spot, we will hook some jacks onto here, lift it off the trailer, drive the trailer out and bring it onto the foundation that we've prepared. We use uh, steel helical pier system, so we don't have to pour a whole concrete foundation. The foundation costs about $2,500. The trailer costs about $7,500. So we save you about $5,000 by putting on a foundation. If you're going to move it three times throughout your lifetime, it actually comes more cost effective to do it this way. The other thing to note is when we do this, we're now creating a square box and we don't have wheel wells inside the home like most tiny houses. So we don't have to worry about 
designing around those wheel wells. The wheels are past the house. Again, it's only for transport. You may have noticed from the interior of the nest here that it's a little bit tight. Now the reasoning for that is because the door is at the end of the unit. And the unit was designed specifically to only have one person inside. It's not meant for a couple. It's not meant for a group of friends. And so having a door at the end actually necessitates a hallway, if you will, all the way down the entire unit, which eats up about a third of the footage. If I were to produce the same size for a couple, I would do it a little bit differently. Now, the reason it has to be the same size is because that main living area is the minimum requirement by Ontario building code for what that living space needs to be. So if I were gonna create this for a couple, I would actually put the door in the center of the side instead of at the end. I would then put the kitchen along the end. It gives it a little bit more wall space to put it along. It's 10 feet long, it's a good sized kitchen. And that creates the whole center as a giant living space. You put a Murphy bed in that when it folds up becomes a desk and you've got a lot of room in there. And when it folds down, you've still got a lot of room to walk around the bed. You can put a queen size or even a king size bed inside. A little bit more about the exterior here. We've got Vic West steel siding going on and we've got a little bit of Shoshugiban on the side. Really nice combination. We get a nice matte finish texture on this one. Kind of cool. The roof is the same system, but it's the galvanized steel. It's a little bit more cost effective and no one ever sees it, so who cares? I also want to point out a bit about how we do the heating system here. So these stands that we have here are where the propane tanks are going to be mounted. Now, it's easier to mount the propane tanks and just, and their barbecue size and just keep changing them out but it is possible to change the heating element on the inside, just, just a little bit of pieces, and hook it up to natural gas instead, if that's what's available on the property. But this way, it can go anywhere. We can see the gas nipple up there. That's where the propane is gonna be going inside, and that's where the uh, propane heater is doing both of our in-floor heating, as well as the hot water, and we'll go look at that in a second. We also have out here our hookup for our electrical. Really easy. If I was putting this, right now it's as a temporary extension cord type idea, but if I was putting this in a permanent location, we would just change this box to be a direct line hookup. This unit is designed to be hooked up permanently on a site. That doesn't mean we can't pick it up, move it, and put it somewhere else and hook it up permanently again. But the idea here is that we have normal plumbing inside. And the plumbing works on a drain system, just like it would in a regular house. And I, we can't see it because of the trailer, but a plumbing pipe sticks out just under here. Three inch ABS pipe, just like a regular house, but there's no basement. Uh, that would on site be hooked up directly to a sewer line that we've trenched into the uh, ground. And we would build an insulated box just around that section. Same deal with the water supply. It comes up right beside it. And again, that would be in the same trench as the sewer line probably hooked up to the main house, but could be hooked up to a well and a septic as well. And it would go inside that same insulated box and come into the house just like a regular house would through the basement. This is our combination boiler system. It's very complicated, don't try it at home, but it works really well. It's a regular hot water heater, so when we turn our faucets on in our shower, we get hot water, but it also does our in-floor heating. This is an idea that works great in the Canadian climate where it's cold. As we found out when we built our first unit, when we have the wall mounted units like most people, the, our feet get cold because the heat never falls far enough to actually warm our feet. So now we've switched to doing in-floor heating and the floor warms up and we get the heat to rise. So you start with your feet warm and then everything else gets warm. If we look down at the bottom through the hole in the drywall there, we have just removed the uh, drywall hatch cover. This would normally be covered with the washer dryer, but that's where we can see our main water line coming in. And just beside that, just out of view, is also where the main plumbing stack is going out to hook up to the sewers. One of the perceived downfalls to in-floor heating is that we don't get air conditioning. Now, I believe we've solved that. We have a fan unit up here, just a normal ceiling fan. It works really well. This is on low, it starts moving the air. We can turn it quite high. We can actually feel it cooling down quite quickly in here. What makes this work so well is the fact that this house is so efficient. It's super insulated. We've got two by six walls, 
full of spray foam insulation. We've got one inch of continuous foam all the way around the outside. We've got six inches of spray foam uh, on the roof and the floor, plus another inch and a half of foam underneath that floor again. And I was in here the other day, and it was four degrees outside. The heating is not actually hooked up or turned on in here, and it heated up to 16 degrees in here, just from my own body heat moving around. Give that a couple days, it's gonna be room temperature, your heating is never gonna turn on. The same thing works in the summertime. We've got the right type of glazing on the windows and the right types of coatings so that we don't get heat gain from the windows and it stays cool in here. We just crack a window at one end and the other end, turn the fan on, we just get enough of a breeze going out that it's gonna cool right down in here, no need for air conditioning. And if you absolutely need it, we can add a wall unit above the window. Just a quick note about the roof. It's a 112 slope coming towards what we call the back of the house, although that's the front of the trailer it's sitting on right now. It's one piece of steel all the way down, so there's no option for leakage. Normally we create a roof to start on the long side and slope down to the short side, shed roof type idea. And we decided to change this around because of where the front door was. It creates a different look, but it does create less volume on the inside because as the slope comes down, the ceiling keeps dropping further and further and further till we only have an eight foot ceiling over here. Where the typical way we build with the shed roof, we start at 10 and go down to nine. So we do end up with a bit less volume inside, same amount of square footage, but it feels a little bit smaller than it could. So again, if I were to create this for a couple and I would put the door on this side, I would create the shed roof and that would give us a bigger volume feeling and create a bigger overall effect of the house. Thanks guys so much for joining us on our tour of the nest. If you have any questions or you need any more information, please don't hesitate to contact us. Thanks for touring the nest with Joanna and I today. Remember, I'm Daniel Ott. This is Upsize Down, where we turn housing on its head.